I know you Ooh. didn't. That was so bad. <laughs> you only have one favorite. I've got three. I know. You can't say that. You guys are by themselves. You guys doing good? Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs>
joyous day when a man and a woman come together to join their two lives into one. God looks with favor upon the sacred covenant made between a husband and a wife. In marriage, a man and woman willingly bind themselves together in love to become one, even as Christ is one with the church, his body. God created us for togetherness. Scott and Aaron, you're about to launch upon an experience that is filled with pleasure, excitement, joy, but sometimes risk and danger. From this day forward, you must decide what it means to you to be husband and wife. The words you say today may come easy, but it will be harder trying to live them out day after day at home. What you promise today must be renewed tomorrow and the next day. At the conclusion of this service, you will be legally husband and wife. Both of you must work together year after year to keep your relationship alive and happy and strong. It's with great pleasure that those of us present can share these significant moments with you. We pledge ourselves to help you in any way that we can to achieve the greatest happiness possible. We commit ourselves to pray for you. May God bless you and keep you in his care for all the wonderful years of marriage ahead of you. Now, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother, I do. Maybe see it. Let's begin our time in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the God who loves and the author of love. We are gathered here because of the relationship you have granted Scott and Aaron. Our prayer today is simple. We ask that you place your blessing upon this couple and upon their marriage. May they sense your presence as a full commitment. They exchange their vows for marriage. We pray also for every person here. May each of us use these moments to reflect on our lives, on our commitments, and in our faithfulness, so that we may each more greatly appreciate your graces in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Scott and Aaron, I charge and require you both as you stand in the presence of God remember that love and loyalty alone will serve as a foundation of a happy and enduring home. No other ties are more tender, no other vows more sacred than those you now assume. These solemn vows you make to God and each other be faithfully kept, and steadfastly you endeavor to do the will of your Heavenly Father. Your life will be full of joy, and the home you're establishing will abide in peace. Now, Scott, I have some questions for you. Ready? <laughs> Scott, when you take Aaron to be your wedded wife, do you vow that with the help of God, you will make your love for her a growing part of your life? Will you comfort her, honor her, defend and keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keep yourself for her alone, as long as you both shall live? I will. That's good. <laughs> Aaron? Will you take Scott to be your wedded husband? Do you vow that with the help of God you will make your love for him a growing part of your life? Will you comfort him, honor him, defend and keep him in sickness and health, forsaking all others? Keep yourself and him alone as long as you both shall live. Romans 12, 1 through 2 and 9. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong and hold tightly to what is good. Love and marriage. I think these are two very misunderstood topics of our day. We see tons of different descriptions of these in both TV, movies, through songs, media. And I was taking some time in 
reading some quotes about marriage specifically that I thought I would share with you all here today from some other married people. One person says this, I love being married. It's so great to find one special person you want to annoy for the rest of your life. <laughs> Another says, before marriage, a man will lie awake all night thinking about something that you said. After marriage, he'll fall asleep before you finish saying it. <laughs> Just one more. The man who says his wife can't take a joke forgets that she took him. <laughs> <laughs> so now we all laugh at these things because um, those of us who are married understand that there's a little bit of truth in all of these and a um, small amount of reality that when brought to the foreground and magnified becomes funny. There's no problem with this, comedians have done it for years. What can happen, however, is that we can allow some of these ideas that the world has about love and about marriage to define for us what love and marriage is supposed to look like. The passage we just heard from Romans was part of a letter from the Apostle Paul. The whole goal of the book is to present a full understanding of the Christian faith. And at chapter 12, he writes his readers to, in essence, submit themselves before God. Then he encourages them not to copy the behavior and customs of this world, but to let God transform who they are in changing the way that they think. Then they will understand what God wants. Scott and Aaron, I can think of no better way to start my encouragement to you. We live in a world where marriage is something that is no longer seen as sacred or holy, but rather something to be put up with or endured, sometimes tossed aside at the first sign of difficulty or struggle. Couples live for a wedding day or a wedding night rather than living for a marriage. Matter encouraged to simply work and ignore. Wives can be shown to hold grudges or contempt for their husbands. The list can go on and on. But the encouragement Paul gives to the church in Rome is also the encouragement that I give to you. Don't copy that pattern, that example. First and foremost, submit yourselves to God and allow Him to define what marriage and love looks like in Him. Paul continues this letter by describing what the church is. It's made up of many different people with unique gifts. But then he switches focus from the individual person to the church as a whole and who we are to be. This is the second section of the reading that we heard. Allow me to read it again for you. It says, don't pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. And hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Now let me just take a moment and unpack this for you. In Greek, there are four words that are translated for love in our English Bibles. There is eros, which is physical or erotic love. There is phileia, which is brotherly love, which is where we get the name Philadelphia. There is storge, which is parental love, like that between a parent and child. But this passage starts with the fourth word, and that is agape. Agape is unconditional love. And more than that, it's a love that is selfless. It's a love that gives and expects nothing in return. You can't fake this, as Paul says. The moment you start loving with an expectation, then you're missing the truest form agape love. So truly love each other. Brotherly love, erotic love are pretty easy. But true agape love, selfless love, takes a conscious commitment of the mind, body, and spirit, not just a one place of feeling. Then Paul says, hold tightly to what is good. He isn't saying just have a firm grip, but the word hold tightly is the same as saying to cement together. It's the same word that is used when it says the man leaves his mother and his father and is joined to his wife and two united as one. It is a coming together that is strong and lasting. Hold tightly to the good in each other. The world will want you to take your eyes off of that. Focus on shortcomings, failures, selfish things. But believe the best in each other. Cement yourselves to the best, to the good in each other, and encourage that in one another. Now the last section of the verse says to take delight in honoring each other. Love the fact that you get to serve one another and lift each other up. Here Paul switches his word, he doesn't use agape anymore, he chooses the relay of love. Which I believe he does this on purpose. He starts by saying to unconditionally love one another. Love with no expectations. But not only that, that wasn't a high enough bar. Enjoy being together. Have fun. 
You're now a family. Encourage one another. Here's one of the cool little side benefits. The more you live, agape, they are love, the better the Eros love becomes. So allow yourself to be submitted to God as He guides your marriage and love each other deeply and honestly as you join together in the vows of marriage. So join hands and repeat after me. I'll start with you. I, Scott, I, Scott, take you, Aaron, take to be my wedded wife, and do promise and covenant for God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful husband in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. Aaron, be that to me. I, Aaron, I, Aaron, take you, Scott, to be my wedded husband. I do you promise the covenant before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful wife in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health. Long to go to heaven. Let's pray together. God of love, you have established marriage for the welfare and happiness of mankind. Yours is the plan, and only with you can we work it out with joy. I pray that you would bless God. May his strength be her protection, his character be her boast, and his sensitivity be the haven for which the heart of a woman truly longs. I pray you bless Aaron. Give her a tenderness that makes her great, a deep sense of understanding and a great faith in you. Give her that inner beauty of soul that never fades, that eternal youth that's found in holding fast to the things that never age. May they not expect the perfection of each other that belongs only to you. May they minimize each other's weaknesses. Be swift to praise and magnify each other's strengths, and see each other through a lover's kind and patient eyes. And they never take their love for granted, but always experience that breathless wonder that exclaims, out of all the school of your chosen name. When the sun is setting, may they be found then as now, still hand in hand, still very proud, still thanking God so much for each other. And may they serve you happily, faithfully together, until at last one shall lay the other in God's arms. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the great lover of our souls. Amen. Scott and Aaron, you have chosen to exchange rings as a symbol of the promises you've made today. In the years to come, these rings should remind you of the overwhelming joy of this special occasion that you were united in marriage. Over the years, as you look at them, may you remember the reason for their existence, and may you always faithfully stand by the covenant that they represent. Symbol of the promises we have made today. I give you this ring in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As a symbol of the promises we have made today, I give you this ring in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'm Scott and Aaron, you've just sealed the relationship by the saying of vows and giving and receiving of rings. This covenant is a relationship pledged between two people. We agree that they commit themselves to one another throughout their lives. You have committed here today to share the rest of your lives with each other. And this next act is just another representation of this commitment. You're lighting one candle from the two side candles. 
We are representing that Scott and Aaron are committing all of themselves to this union. Two who are becoming one. Two families, two lives, two ways of living life. Choosing to join together.
Scott Walker. Just 
introduce my wife Barb because I can't do this by myself. She did so much in organizing this, and I can't stand up here and talk without her. Besides that, I get scared. Anyway, what I'd like to do is uh, formally welcome each and every one of you to this celebration of the marriage of our daughter, Erin and Scott. I can't see it. The wonderful man beside her, whom we really come to, we've grown to admire greatly. We, we really enjoy your guys' company. We welcome in particular Scott's parents, Bruce and Leanne Walker, and their family and friends. And of course, we welcome the Reverts family and our friends. I know many of you have come a long distance to be here, and we really, truly appreciate it. And of course, a, a big welcome to Aaron and Scott's friends. You know, you guys are awesome. We consider it a privilege to have great friends. And it's a real privilege to have you guys here tonight. Now, we need to focus just a little bit on Scott and Aaron. By the way, aren't they stunning? <laughs> I might be a little biased. As I was thinking about what to say, um, I was trying to remember when Barb first mentions a, a Scott, and actually it went like this. It was the fall term of Aaron's senior year, and she'd signed up for a three-month stint in Eastern Asia. I don't know how that works. That's not the way I went to college, but. <laughs> so we took her to Chicago's International Hair Airport, where we said her goodbyes, and we went back home. She had given me her cell phone because obviously it was useless in China. And not long, I threw it on the, the desk when I got home, but not long after it was sitting there, and all of a sudden this text message, you know that familiar text message sound? It went off, and I figured, well, I might as well go shut that thing off. There's nobody here to answer it. And I noticed the message, it said, Aaron, where are you? I miss you. Scott. And I looked at Barb and I said, who's Scott? <laughs> anyway, long story short, you know, after, when she came back, it wasn't long before we got to learn about Scott. And in fact, I had these little stickers made up. And we're, we're really happy with her choice with Scott. I still stand with Scott Walker. <laughs> Actually, uh, if you're from Wisconsin, you know where that came from. Here, Aaron, you can have that. You can, you can put that up somewhere. Anyway, it's, it's been, you know, the journey of getting to know you, Scott, has been a fun one. You know, we're really happy with Aaron's choice of a guy here, and we look forward to many future opportunities to get together. Now, Barb wants to talk just a little bit. I was just going to say, it didn't take us long to get to know them, and appreciate Scott's love and music, and his talent for music, and his caring personality, and the two of them, they complement each other so well. They do skiing, and the hiking, and the Colorado breweries, and the concerts. <laughs> And I do remember a special 2013 kickball championship. Uh, and uh, we just have, want to give you all our love, and we, your happiness means the world to us. So, with that, Aaron and Scott, you know, your life together as husband and wife is just beginning, and the journey will take many turns along the way. There will be happy days, and there will be sad days. However, if you continue to lean on each other and make each other number one, you will have a joyous and happy marriage. And with that, please raise your glass. Let me grab mine over here. May your love grow stronger each and every day of your lives. Cheers. 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 C
because I know it means it's so much to Scott and Aaron to have all the people that are most important in their lives together in one place. It was awesome. I also want to say thank you to my parents, Kel and Barb Reverts, and Scott's parents, Bruce and Leanne Walker, for putting together such an amazing day. So thank you for everything. When you're the big sister, it's inevitable that your little sister wants to do everything that you do. And by the way, they will also do whatever you tell them to do. <laughs> Throughout the years, Erin willingly participated with me in many jazzercise parties. Played library. I don't know how you even play library, and Mom was probably the only person that checked out books at the library, which was really disappointing. Um, and she was also the recipient of a pretty amazing Vidal Sassoon haircut by yours truly. <laughs> it was also not uncommon for Erin to join me in the bathroom while I was going to the bathroom. At one point she sat on the floor next to the toilet and played motivational music on the keyboard for me. She just had to be with me all the time, I guess. It was awesome. <laughs> This trend continued as we went through high school. We ended up playing the same sports and even went to the same college. As most of you know, Aaron and I both went to Augustana. Aaron will tell that. Aaron will tell you it was because of the medical program that they have, but let's be honest, she just wanted to be with me for another year. <laughs> Maybe. Now that we're older, the playing field has become much more even, and I find myself wanting to be more like Aaron. Aaron, I am so impressed with everything you've done and who you've become. Aaron's obviously smart, um, but what makes her especially good at her job as a physical therapist um, is her compassion for her patients, and that's something that you can't learn. That's just something that you have to have as a person. This carries through to other parts of her life as well. Erin is one of the most caring and giving people I know. And as we've grown older, our friendship has only gotten stronger. And I know that I can go to her for anything. And I feel so lucky to have you as a sister and my best friend. I'm also impressed with the man that you found. Good job, Scott. <laughs> Scott, you're the perfect match for Erin. You're caring and supportive. And you both share the same sense of adventure and curiosity. You're always doing things. Um, we all know that Erin has quite the quirky sense of humor, but let's be honest, she's met her match with you. <laughs> Triangle face, anyone? No? You felt like a part of the family for quite some time now, and now it's official, which we're happy to say. So I am so happy for the both of you. Everyone, please join me in a toast congratulating Mr. and Mrs. Scott Walker. I'd also like to start with a thank you uh, to everyone for being here and uh, the parents as well. You've raised uh, two wonderful individuals that I'm very happy to have in my life and to have uh, the friendships that we do have. But I'm going to get right into it here. Uh, I've known Scott since uh, elementary school. Uh, around sixth grade or so, uh, Scott let me borrow his acoustic guitar and showed me a couple riffs on the guitar. And uh, within a few weeks of that, I liked it so much I had my very own electric guitar. And it was at that very moment we both went from having short, clean cut hair to instantly having long rocker hair. <laughs> Those were the years that we practiced moves that rockers need to know, such as this with hair going all over the place. And uh, I am eternally grateful for uh, learning those moves uh, with Scott. Uh, he also pretty much got me my job at John Deere, which I'm eternally uh, grateful for. And next on the list is just to help me find a wife, man. Uh, so <laughs> that one, I appreciate it. Uh, the first, first story I want to tell here real quick, and this is a little bit of a um, FYI or heads up for you here. Um, Years ago, when Scott and I were roommates down in uh, downtown Moline, he approached me one time. He was getting ready to leave for work for like four weeks straight. And uh, he approached me and he said, he asked if uh, he could forego his half of the, the cable bill that month because he wasn't going to be there. I mean, he can't watch TV or do internet. So after my initial horror of potentially having to pay the entire bill myself that month, I realized the sheer genius of the idea. 
I've since used it a few times myself with my mortgage holder. And I just I would like to let you know, anytime you visit, you're welcome to stay in my house. It's it's in my cardboard box behind my, my former house that I used to have. So uh, it's cozy and uh, kind of cold in the winter. I'm not sure about the summer yet, but I'll know soon enough. Uh, next story here. Back in seventh grade, eighth grade, something like that, a uh, bunch of people used to meet at my house before school. They'd ride their bikes over to my house, and uh, we would walk to school from there. One morning, there's a few of us who are uh, already there, and we're waiting for Scott. He's the last one to show up that day. We're talking about the normal things seventh and eighth grade young men talk about, you know, how tragic of a movie Titanic was, and how one day we're going to make our wives so happy. <laughs> winking, if you couldn't see, I was winking in Scott's general direction there. And uh, along comes Scott finally, just kind of slowly pedaling around the corner, just putzing along. And uh, my driveway, it was typical two-car driveway, so 15 feet, maybe 15 feet wide, 20 feet wide. And off, way off to one side, there's a rock. It's like the size of an orange. It's not like a big landscaping rock. It's just a, I don't know, two-inch rock. Well, Scott's slowly pedaling, and all of a sudden, boom, he hits this rock, slams his feet to the ground, and looks at us and yells, did you guys plant that there? <laughs> no, we did not plant that two-inch rock in my 15-foot driveway, expecting you would hit it with your one-inch tire on your bike. But I guess the point of that story is, uh, there's just some things you're supposed to run into, I guess. My last, my last one here. Last one, I think this one, ladies, pull out the tissues. I have a tissue in my pocket here as well, just in case. About eight years ago or so, roughly eight years ago, Scott and I are on our way to uh, Ribco one night. It's a bar in uh, downtown Rock Island. We're listening to music, naturally, and uh, of course, I'm sitting in the passenger seat and I'm practicing my moves I've learned over the years. <laughs> Scott was driving though, but nonetheless, he's also <laughs> practicing those rocker moves. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Eventually, he, he turns down the music and he goes, Dude! And I knew something was coming pretty big here. I wasn't sure <laughs> what, what he was about to say, but it, Dude! This girl's gonna be there that is the kind of girl you marry. And he foreshadowed that eight years ago tonight. I just think that's awesome. So, awesome foreshadowing for a fairy tale story. So, with that being said, if everyone could raise your glass and a toast to Mr. and Mrs. Scott Walker and to just knowing when things are right.
And uh, so we thank our, our wedding party as well. We traveled, made a lot of commitments, had a lot of fun. Um, we've come a long way from Denver, so uh, we're glad to be back here in the Quad Cities. It's always great. So, um, also, want to of course thank my lovely bride here for uh, for saying yes. We hope you all, all have a great rest of the evening. Uh, we've got uh, a band playing from 8.30 to 11.30. So enjoy, this is the Brat Pack. Uh, without further ado, so thank you.